Domestic workers are at the front line of the economic crisis on two ends, in our homeland and here in the U.S. Our wages are depressed locally, our hours are cut, and our benefits are scaled down despite heavier workload. Amid the global recession, New York City continues to be center, to be the center of, of the world economy, but it cannot be without the labor of women, women domestic workers. We perform the necessary labor to make other work possible for American businesses and professionals. We do the very basic and vital work for any economy, taking care of the next generation, the elderly, the homes, cooking food, and doing the laundry. But even in New York, our labor remains unrecognized, unprotected, and devalued. Uh, today, domestic workers are over 200,000 in the New York metropolitan area. And um, they're primarily women of color, women from the Caribbean, women from Latin America, from Asia, from Africa. And we all come in search of jobs. We all come in search of an opportunity so that we can get something to send home to the families that we left behind. And then we find ourselves in this lawless industry. And when you're operating in a household, a private household in the middle of a suburban uh, neighborhood, that climate of fear can be all the more exacerbated because you don't know who to go to, you don't know where to go to. If you are a recent immigrant, you don't know who to call, how to call um, anyone for assistance or help. I had always think or thought that the United States was a place where anyone could get a job and be safe. But I think that it depends on who you are. After eight years of organizing with the Mayan, I now understand that the exploitation and abuse of domestic workers is rooted in society's devaluation of women's work, and that the exploitation of our labor is intertwined with our class, race, and gender oppression. Domestic work is rooted in slavery. From the days when they, they brought the slaves in, the workers in the house were known as the domestic workers, and they had the farm laborers in the fields. But when the try to get some laws to help um, domestic workers. It still didn't help domestic workers because when the laws were made, it excluded domestic workers. Um, unfortunately, in terms of this representation and assisting these workers, it's almost too little too late um, because it's, these are all remedies to address uh, problems that could have been prevented, ideally, if there was more monitoring and regulating of domestic work, uh, of the, the, the domestic worker industry in the first place. Domestic workers have been coming together to organize, to raise visibility, to bring the sector out of the shadows, as we've heard time and time again this evening, and to build power among this workforce that has been made invisible and vulnerable for too long. So Barbara spoke a little bit about the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights that we've been fighting for here in New York State. And essentially, it's calling for basic benefits like paid leave and notice and protection from discrimination that workers would otherwise be unable to negotiate for on their own. At the national level, alliance groups are also coming together to demand basic protection under the U.S. federal labor law. We're also working across the globe with domestic worker organizations and unions to get the international labor organization to pass international standards for domestic workers across the world. And I feel everybody watching this video, listening to us, is not end to helping this domestic worker bill of rights. That would be end. From our homelands to the U.S., the grass, grassroots to the national and international, domestic workers are continuing to realize our power. We are fighting for our rights, respect, dignity, and liberation. And through this, we aim to give real value to our work as women. Thank you.